today we're going to the Ukraine. In a way. <laughs> Welcome to the Ukrainian Cultural Heritage Village. Thanks. The Ukrainian Cultural Heritage Village is an outdoor living history museum that tells the story of Ukrainian immigration and settlement to East Central Alberta prior to 1930. What role have Ukrainian immigrants played in Alberta's history? Ukrainian immigrants are one of the largest pioneering groups that came to Alberta and even today Ukrainians form about 10% of Alberta's population. So why, why did they come here in the first place and what did they do when they got here? There weren't very many options once they did get, it, get to Alberta. That's right, there were a couple of things going on. Uh, you, the Ukrainian settlers were looking for a place to go. Canada was looking for agricultural settlers for the West, so it was a, a good match on both sides. So when they did get here, where did they stay? When they first got here and got to their homestead, uh, they had to start out by building themselves a really simple shelter called a bourde or a sod house. Okay, where is that? <laughs> it's right here on our site. Why don't you come with me? Oh, there it is. You weren't kidding when you say it's a sod house. <laughs> it is. It's uh, built out of clay and logs and topped with uh, a sturdy roof of sod. What on earth was she trying to tell me? Uh, she was explaining to you that this is built out of wood. It's a, a wood frame. Uh, and then the wood is covered over by clay on the outside, um, all naturally occurring under the soil, and then topped with these bricks of sod. And the sod is stacked up in a way that when the rain falls, the sod won't wash away. So it makes a very nice, solid uh, roof on the home, and everything is materials right here on their homestead. That is heavy. <laughs> Did I break it? Yeah. <laughs> She's testing my muscle. This would serve as a shelter for two, maybe three years while they got themselves established, while they focused on clearing some fields, planting those crops and building up their farm, finding the time and the resources to build a more permanent home. This is the Greco House, and this house represents a more permanent home that settlers would build maybe 10 or 15 years after arriving in Canada and live in uh, for another 10 or 15 years while they're developing their farm. So it's a huge jump from the sod house to this, like just in size alone. Absolutely. This, this is a home that's more typical of what the Ukrainian settlers left behind when they moved here from Galicia and Bukovina. Uh, this is a more permanent home. It's got two rooms plus a, you know, a storage way or entryway. So they've got their everyday room that they use for cooking and sleeping in. But then they also have a room called the Velika Khata, which means like a, a big house or a great house, which is when they have guests or special occasions. So uh, definitely a big step up from the sod house. A lot more homey. A lot more homey, yes, than this dirt house. That's right. <laughs> uh, what's this building that we're coming up to now? This is a one-room schoolhouse that is typical of 1920s schools on the prairies. This is the Russia School, and uh, this building was built in 1910, and this is what it looked like in 1927. Why is it called the Russia School? I thought this was Ukrainian. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was uh, a misperception by the people who came from the government to establish the school districts. They thought that the people around here were Russian, uh, called it Russia School, thought that they were uh, doing a very good thing for the people. Um, and it was later on in the 1930s that the Ukrainian families in the area actually renamed it to Ivan Franko School. When you come here, when you're in grade one, you will get sort of these kind of lessons, right? You will get history. 
So what was school like if you were a child going, uh, going to school? It was actually not that different uh, in terms of you know, the subjects that they learned and uh, coming to school each day. The biggest difference was that grades one through eight were all in one room with one teacher uh, and all learning, doing simultaneously. And then maybe you do a bit of art. I personally, I like teaching music. Usually by the time they were getting a little older, maybe into the young teens, they would start spending more time at home helping out on the farms. Uh, schools also had a little more flexible schedule. They would break during harvest time because students would be pulled out of school anyways, so the school would shut down for a break at harvest time and have students in school at quieter times of year on the farm. I was so surprised to read, uh, I know that Ukrainians brought a very strong faith with them, yeah. but I was really surprised to read that you guys are here in the church capital of North America? Yes, we're part of Lamont County, and Lamont County has, uh, they call themselves the church capital of North America because they have the highest concentration of churches anywhere in, in North America, and a large number of those churches are Byzantine or Eastern Rite churches like we have here. Something for the Ukrainian settlers to the area, when they first immigrated, the clergy weren't able to come to Canada with them. People were left to practice their faith in their own personal ways and in their own individual families. So once the clergy arrived and the churches were, were able to be built, that became very important. They valued that faith and that church even more because they had kind of had to do without for, for a number of years. So you saw a lot of churches spring up um, in all these different rural communities. The three churches that we have here are uh, representing sort of the three realms of the Eastern Rite that were present in East Central Alberta. Right now we're in the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. We also have a Ukrainian Greek Orthodox and a Russo-Greek Orthodox Church. There's a lot of symbolism inside uh, Byzantine churches and this one is no exception. Uh, so here the colors on the walls are very symbolic. At the bottom level we have a brown which represents the earth that we all walk on. Then we have a nice green color which represents life on earth and up on the ceiling is blue with gold stars representing heaven above earth. The Byzantine churches are traditionally built in the shape of a cross so it's narrower at the entryway, wider here in the nave and then narrower again up at the sanctuary so looking down from above you see a cross laying there on the ground. We have services in our churches. Uh, they come here and they attend service because maybe their Baba attended this church um, when she was growing up on the farm and it's a family connection to them. But because we're also a living history museum, people come here to learn about the church and to experience maybe a Byzantine service for the first time and be able to learn about what makes this different from you know the other churches that may, they may have experienced in their lives. One day here is all it takes to see just how much Ukrainians have shaped Western Canada's history. It was a great day, or in Ukrainian, a dobreden. For 100 Huntley Street in the Ukrainian Cultural Heritage Village, I'm Megan Kelly.